and we left off with saving a list template. Uh, let's switch to Visual Studio here. So um, again, uh, you're going to be receiving a uh, source code for this, um, and uh, event receiver is right here. It's number two list event receiver. It's a separate solution. It's a solution built on the SharePoint list solution with additional uh, event receiver um, with additional event receiver add-on. And basically, um, I wanted to show you how you can add how you can easily add an event receiver to a list right from within the list project. So we start with the list project just like we did uh, before. We already created the list here. To add an event receiver to any list, just right click on the list. Uh, it doesn't have to be on the list, but it's contextually more linked with Visual Studio if you're uh, creating it in a list. And um, basically you say new item, add new item, and from here you say event receiver. And you say add. Now as we looked in our uh, PowerPoint deck. And here we have different types of events. We're, you can have site events, you can have list events. Um, so we're going to keep to list events. And then in here you have an option to pick an existing list on the side. Because keep in mind Visual Studio is connected to the debug side that you have. So essentially uh, the debug side that you have um, already has a couple of lists installed on it. And one of them is our core calendar and several other lists. So uh, by, because you click, right-clicked on the list name, um, it will automatically associate it to that particular list that you clicked on. And in here, you pick an event that you want to um, add to the list uh, or you want to listen to. Uh, so in this case, uh, for example, um, you have uh, uh, you know, the list, uh, uh, the item is being created. So there's important uh, distinction between is being created and has been created. Uh, so um, when the item is being created, that means that you can still prevent the creation of an item if certain, you know, if, if your event receiver logic uh, calls for it. And then the, and the difference here, the item was added or was updated. Uh, essentially here, the item has been updated and you can execute some post actions. So it is being created, you can still prevent it. Was created, you can't create, you can't prevent it. You can only execute post action. So in this case, I'm going to say um, item is being added and click finish and that will provision the uh, event receiver for me uh, as a, as a C-sharp backend code. And in here, you can attach, you can actually, one thing I'm sort of neglected to mention is you can check multiple boxes. The item has been added, updated, and deleted. And then you will have several stubs here. Each for item has been added, updated, or deleted. And you can add your code right here and uh, allow item to be, um, and handle conditions such as item been added, deleted, and updated. Uh, one thing also that happened that we didn't see is uh, the same feature that we have here for provisioning list template and list has been reused to uh, have our event receiver. So this feature now handles also the event receiver, uh, which uh, is also something uh, worthwhile mentioning. So. Um, uh, so uh, let's switch back to the actual solution because really nothing else has been changed here. Part the event receiver has been added and the uh, and the feature has been created. Uh, let's uh, switch back to our actual uh, event receiver solution, Visual Studio solution, uh, that uh, the source code for which you'll you'll have, and um, and uh, check out the actual source code that we've added to the solution. Um, and that's the same source code that we've seen in the PowerPoint, essentially handling the situation uh, when the catering is required for business events. Um, so when someone selected the category of business and they selected the catering is required, the message is returned saying you need the cost, co uh, cost code and then the event is, is uh, uh, prevents the item from being created. So here's my uh, solution here. Um, List event receiver, yep, that's the right solution. It's the same solution, however, the uh, event receiver has been added here. And uh, I'm going to open my uh, code. And let's take a look at the code. I'm going to expand the window here. Uh, so the code basically listens to item being added. And uh, uh, in here, we get a hold of the metadata field for catering. And catering, if I go back to my solution here, uh, in my lists, uh, right, if I open the list template, the cater
catering is which I didn't. Um, sorry, category comes out of the box. Catering is something that I've uh, that I've added uh, myself. It's a it's a true or false uh, uh, list item here um, or list field here. Catering required. And keep in mind because um, it, we only listen to internal name. And the internal name is catering. So um, in here we say if uh, item properties catering is not empty and um, it's true, then we also verify if the category field um, is business. And a category field, uh, if I go back to my uh, corp calendar here, the category res is right here. It's a choice field. It's a list of items, um, out-of-the-box items, and one of them is business. Uh, business, there's a personal, other diff different categories that are come with out-of-the-box calendar. And if I check properties here, it's, sure enough, it's also called uh, category, so there's no problem there. Uh, the type is choice, as you can see. And uh, so we verify if uh, the category is uh, business and catering has been requested, then uh, we return uh, an error saying, you know, you have to you have to provide um, you have to provide the cost code. So in here, uh, to do that, we say property status cancel with error. So this will cancel and prevent the event receiver from being executed, and also will give you the error message. You have to have those two in order for error message to show up. So let's deploy the solution and see how it all looks like in action. So I'm going to right-click on my SharePoint list here and say deploy. OK. And uh, wait for the solution to be deployed. Now, because this solution is also provisioning a list, because it's the same solution with a list, um, it's just with the, uh, with the event receiver on top of it, We'll also get a little resolution error saying, not error, but a uh, 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 little message saying, would you like to resolve automatically? OK, so uh, Visual Studio is connected to the site. If there are any existing solutions that's been deployed here prior, they will be removed at this time. OK. So the feature has been deactivated, the solution has been retracted. Now the solution is, uh, is being deleted, and now the solution is being added again. And here's our message saying that instance already, list instance already exists. We say, that's fine, resolve automatically, which means delete the list and recreate it. And uh, the deployment will continue. Okay, as we can see, the deployment happened, and now the feature is being activated. When the feature is being activated, when the feature is being activated, uh, the actual list will be provisioned. So the list has been removed. Now the list has been provisioned, and uh, the event receiver is being attached to the list. And uh, we'll check out how. Okay, the deployment has succeeded. That's great. I'm going to click on Core Calendar and let the site reload. And remember, that takes a little while as well. Uh, so while it's loading, keep in mind that uh, there is no way for us really to say whether there's an event receiver attached to the list through the SharePoint user interface. There's no way for me to go to settings and see, oh, is there an event receiver? Why is this error message happening? Um, that's from a developer standpoint, right? Bus business users won't really care. They just see the error message saying, hey, there's, you can't add this item. But from a developer's perspective, um, you can't really see whether event receiver is attached to the list. So that's one drawback. There's no UI to tell that. Um, there are tools that allow you to tell that, but not no UI. So um, that's something to keep in mind. There's no way to configure it from the UI unless you've, you've created your own user interface for configuration of the event receiver, and maybe that's another list. Uh, so that's some, some food for thought. Um, so while this is loading our corporate calendar, uh, we will um, we'll just wait. And uh, the item that we'll create for testing will be the item where catering is 
required and business is the, um, the category. Okay, so here's our list. We're going to go to items, say new item, and create a new item. Okay. I think my system is uh, from a few deployments is getting a little bit slow. Okay, here it is. Uh, test item. So it doesn't matter what we call it, but what we need to make sure is uh, uh, all of the required fields are filled in, uh, which in this case only uh, default categories. We're going to pick business. And we'll we're going to say the catering is required. Click Save. And now when the item, is, the item will be attempted to be created, and it will have to pass through the event receiver. Um, and the item did get created without any issues. So let's see, uh, again, just to make sure the item is being added, catering. So the catering needs to be uh, checked and oh and the category so the logic here uh, sorry my mistake the logic here is the catering is checked and if there is anything else than business uh, uh, then the error has to be created uh, so what we're going to do we're going to actually delete this item so one thing that you could do here. You could also uh, create the same event receiver with exactly the same logic for item being updated. That way, if someone creates an item and attempts to update it later, they will also get an error. That would be a good practice. Uh, in this case, we only created, uh, we only handled new events being added, which means that people can go back and change it anyways. It's kind of um, break our logic. Uh, so just keep in mind that you want to kind of think about all of the scenarios. So for our demo, that's fine. So I'm going to say test item, and I'm going to say catering required. Uh, but for category, I'm going to say it's uh, birthday. Um, and save it, and we should get an error. And it's a generic SharePoint error page that should show up. There you go. It says something went wrong, and that's a generic SharePoint page, but uh, the message is ours. The cost code needs to be created for business events. Um, so um, unfortunately, there's this additional stuff that comes with SharePoint, which makes it look like a technical error, uh, but it's not. And unfortunately, there is no easy way through the event receiver to change your template. So that's the only template that we have. And as you can see, the event wasn't created. So if I go back to my corp calendar, the event won't be there. So, and uh, I'm just going to refresh it, and here it is, only two events that are created. Okay. So that's pretty much uh, uh, the creation of the event receivers. Um, again, you will receive a uh, the the um, um, the source code for this, and um, uh, you'll be able to try it out for yourself.